Right, let's just draw a um, shear force diagram for this beam here. Let's just quickly sketch it out again. So I've got um, RA is 20. We've got a UDL and then RB is 20. That looks uh, bad. <laughs> RB is... Oh, Jesus. I'm writing RB. That's 20. Um, <coughs> so I've got 10 kilonewtons per metre run and we know it's acting over 4 metres. To draw a shear force diagram for a UDL, so we've got an arrow coming up of 20. And then for every metre um, we go across, we're dropping down 10 uh, kilonewtons, because it's 10 kilonewtons per metre. So we're going across and down, across and down, across and down. And you end up with a diagonal line by joining these dots. So we've gone up 20 and we're going to come down a total of 40 because it's 10 times 4. So by the time we get to here we're going to have gone down minus 20. So by the time we reach this arrow we've gone to minus 20. Um, so then you just come up, up for RB, so up there and it closes it. So you end up with a diagram that looks like that. Uh, that's how you draw basically shear force for a UDL. Let's just move over to uh, this example here. <coughs> you tend to draw your diagram, then shear force, then bending underneath. But we'll draw uh, we'll draw it above in this case. So this is just even uh, guessing, really. So we we come up whatever RA is. You've got a UDL that's sloping down, slope down like that, and then the UDL ends there. So there's no more sloping, it just goes straight across and then where RB is it comes up. So that's the shear force diagram for that. So for RA, we worked out RA was 18.75. So 18.75. <coughs> and then we came down 3 metres at 10 kilonewtons per metre, which will be a total drop of 30. So I've got 18.75 minus 30 equals minus 11.25 and then and of course RB when we worked it out was 11.25 so we come back up 11.25 to this up arrow and that closes it starts and ends on zero perfect so yeah with a UDL you just have a sloping line and then if there's no UDL you just go horizontal until you hit your next arrow um, so that's it for a UDL